could see that it was a worry there, a constant worry. Innocent people suffer and, and my wife, my late wife, did suffer. If you've got a sense of right and wrong and you, you know that you've been wronged, it gets to you. I was blessed with two young children, Jessica and Peter. Yeah, and happily married. And um, it became a struggle. Well, you know, most unemployed people, many a time, uh, Avril and I would go without, you know, a good stable diet in an effort to feed our children. My mum was quite stressed at times, quite emotional. Um, bouts of depression looking back now, you know, there'll be arguments in the house uh, now I know because it'd be a constant worry, no light at the end of the tunnel. Every time you try and get on uh, with a major company, it's blank, you get a blank. There's also the, you know, the, the anger and the frustration, not knowing what's happening, and sort of annoying sort of guessing, but not being able to prove it. That's just really an annoying sense of injustice all the time, that you're, you know, what the, what's going on? We had four children. We had three at school and Kelly was two. It was hard work trying to work out the money that you'd got to pay the bills and buy the foods. We never had anything. Not does or I. We never had anything. We were out from here, really. really. And now we didn't split up, I don't know. I was totally blacked. And then I went out to work for eight years. And it was stressful, yeah. Very, very stressful. And I think that's what led to my art bypass and everything else because I wasn't in that much stress. I'm immensely proud of what United has achieved, millions of pounds in compensation, and we received an apology in respect of their behaviour. Crucially for Unite, we did not accept that this apology was the end of the matter. We don't accept that the apology is genuine, and anybody who is genuine about wanting to apologise, any company that is genuine, would call it for what it is, a blacklist, and call the people responsible for creating the blacklist to task and dismiss them. We're very proud at Thompson's to have been a part of this litigation and in fact have been the lead solicitors in this litigation. The Unite claimants that we represented at Thompson's were the last to settle. We held out for the best terms. The union wanted us to fight hard, it committed enormous resource to it, and we committed enormous resource to it. That's what it takes to win cases like this. It goes absolutely to the heart of what this firm is about. We're trade union lawyers. We're not lawyers who happen to do a bit of trade union law. Thompsons have stood shoulder to shoulder with us in respect of all of our trade union struggles. But in this litigation, it would not have been possible without Thompsons, a trade union firm who understood exactly the importance of the issue of blacklisting within the movement itself, and then a firm who operated to the highest of standards. When you engage in something as dramatic as this, one of the biggest scandals that uh, our nation has ever seen, destroying lives and destroying families. It requires a commitment that spreads beyond just uh, specific individuals. Of course, Howard Beckett, our legal executive director, has led this, but he's been ably supported by Thompson solicitors who, of course, have a history of fighting for working people. They always have to. Uh, they do a fantastic job, and we were delighted at the role that they played in bringing about justice and fairness to uh, try to make certain that some form of justice is brought and we'll continue to be vigilant as we go forward. It's disgusting, it's, um, it's wrong, you know, like you wouldn't think that that shouldn't be going on in in this 
day and age. Things only change when workers make things change, and the only way they can change things are through their trade union. One of the lessons I hope people will learn uh, that you do need the strength of the unions around you. Yeah, they've done well for us. <laughs>